is this thing on? Hey friends, it's Maisie with Barbecue by Maisie and you, my friend, are tuned in for another episode of Pit Boss Backyard Bosses. Let's go! All right, today I have got a real special one up my sleeve for you because today we're smoking a brisket. If you want more episodes of Pit Boss Backyard Bosses, make sure you're subscribed to the Pit Boss YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode. There are some good ones coming up, I can tell you that much. All right, let's stop yapping and talk about this brisket we're smoking today. Make sure you have an ample amount of time for your cook. You can always rest your brisket longer. There's ways to keep it warm, but it is a real difficult task to rush the process of cooking the brisket and coming out with a nice, perfect end product. So keep in mind, you need ample amount of time. All right, now you're at the store and you're picking out a brisket. Which one do you choose? When you're looking for briskets, make sure you are sifting through the ones that have thin flats. That is the thinner point of the meat. You've got the point and you've got the flat. There was a lot of thin flats. So that's your first two steps when you're going in to smoke a brisket. Listen, <clears throat> lots of methods to smoke in a brisket. So take the pieces that I show you today in this video and combine them with other things you learn from other videos and you're gonna craft the best process for you. Now I'm gonna stop yapping and we're gonna dive in to prepping this brisket. All right, we are going to start with the fatty side of our brisket. When you look at the brisket, there you're going to notice a couple different types of fat. You're gonna have a slimier, shinier fat and then you're going to have like a darker white fat. I like to get rid of that slimy, shiny looking fat because it's just not going to render down and it's not, it's really not providing any benefits when we cook this brisket. Now the other type of fat, I want to leave some of that on there as a protective layer while our brisket is on the smoker. It's going to render down, it's gonna help keep our brisket nice and moist, it's gonna help keep it away, protect our meat from the heat. So we do want to leave some of that good fat, I'd say about a quarter of an inch. When we're done with our back, we're going to flip it over and again, just trim off some of that slimy fat from the front and that's about it. If there's any extra pieces of meat hanging off on the brisket that may have gotten cut weird in the butchering process, we wanna go ahead and remove that and we're really trying to keep in mind when we're smoking this brisket to keep it nice and aerodynamic and uniform so you don't have any pieces that are going to be getting cooked more quickly than the others. Those will just get crisp up and kind of just not be very good, they'll be burnt. All right, this brisket is looking beautiful if I do say so myself. As we dive into seasoning the meat here I am going to use mustard as a binder. It's just going to help this rub stick to the meat. You don't have to use it. You could use water but keep in mind you won't taste the mustard when you're eating the brisket. Rub that in and now we are going to apply two seasonings from Pit Boss today. The first one I'm using is called Prime Beef. It's going to give the brisket a nice color and nice base flavor. It's got a little garlic, little paprika in there, nice and flavorful. Remember, the brisket is a big piece of meat so it can handle quite a bit of seasoning. I like to go heavy on the seasoning, so sue me. And then right on the top, we're coming in with the smoked salt, cracked pepper, one of my personal Pit Boss favorite seasonings. And I just like that classic salt and pepper taste on my brisket. So we're gonna slather a little bit of that on too. Make sure you pat it in so it stays nice and adhered to your brisket. It's always a good idea to season your brisket in advance just to let that seasoning kind of sit on the brisket. You could even do this overnight, prep it in, prep it during the day, let it sit in your fridge overnight with the seasoning on it. That would be just fine. But I like to get it prepped, let my smoker get heated up while my brisket's just chilling with all the seasoning on it before I put it on the smoker. All right, brisket's prepped. Let's get it on the Pit Boss Pro Series. 
All right, we are putting the brisket on the middle portion of the smoker. The heat source is coming from the bottom, so I don't wanna put the brisket right over it. I wanna get up and away from the heat a little bit, so I removed the top two shelves. We're going fat cap down right on the grates. On the Pit Boss Pro Series, it has a water pan, so I do have my water pan full of water. It's just going to help add some moisture into the cooking chamber of the Pit Boss. Our smoker is heated up to 250 degrees to start this cook off today. I have got competition blend pellets in the smoker. All right, so for this first part of the cook, we really don't have to do much for it. We are going to come out and check on it in a couple hours. At that point, we just wanna see if our brisket is ready to spritz. So the hard part's done. The rest of the day, we're just being brisket babysitters. So I'm gonna head in, I'm gonna crack a Diet Coke. I'll see you back out here in two hours to check on our brisket. All right guys, we have reached the two hour mark of our brisket. You got a nice up close personal view of the brisket here. I wanna show you what we're looking for when we start spritzing. You can kind of see here how the meat is starting to get a little bit dry, kind of cracking a little bit. This is a good time to start spritzing. We don't want to spritz too early. We're just going to end up spritzing all the rub off. But we can tell that our meat's a little dry, a little thirsty, needs a little drink. And that's exactly what we're going to give it. Got some beef broth mixed with just a little bit of water. And now we're just going to start building that bark with our spritzing. We'll probably do this about every hour, hour and a half, depending on how the meat looks. Okay, so that was our first spritz, two hours into the cook. This next little portion of the cook, we're just back in our babysitting phase. We just wanna spritz this brisket when it starts to look a little bit dry. We wanna keep it moist. We're gonna keep our water pan full of water. So about every hour to hour and a half, I'm just going to come out and check, see if it looks dry, give it a little spritz. We really wanna open that door as little as possible and make it as quick as possible. So nothing very exciting here for the next little while. I'll take you along, but really we're just keeping an eye on our little baby brisket, making sure it doesn't get too dry. I'll bring you back in on the important parts, but for now, we're just gonna be spritzing until we reach the stall, which is gonna be about the 150 to 170 internal temperature range. Hey gang, welcome back in. We are five and a half hours into our brisket cook. I've been spritzing about every hour to hour and a half. And I just came out to check the internal temperature to see where we're doing, how we're doing that way. And we're in about the 150s. So we're getting close to that stall if we're not in it already. However, I just don't love my bark yet. It's getting there, but I want to keep building it before I wrap it in butcher paper. So when it comes to knowing when to wrap, of course you want to pay attention to the stall. That's always a great indicator of being time to wrap, but also and possibly more importantly is your bark looking like you want it. Because if it's not, this is the time where we are building the bark. So we don't want to rush through it until it's just what we want. And I think we can do better. So I'm just going to leave it in the smoker a little bit longer, unwrapped, keep spritzing it while we develop that bark. I'm really not too worried about even getting it wrapped until we reach closer to 170. Anywhere between the 150, 170 range, good time to wrap, okay? So we are back in babysitter mode. I will be back out to check this brisket in probably an hour since we're kind of getting to that point where it might be getting time to wrap it up. So I'll see you back out here in one hour. All right, so we are here an hour later and I want to go ahead and push this brisket through the stall. So we are going to go ahead and wrap. There she is, our little baby. Okay, so when I'm wrapping, I want to be able to tuck this piece under, and I can't quite do that yet, so I am going to push it and tuck. Wrap up your edges, and we're just going to flip it, and we're going to flip it one more time. 
everything tucked in nice. All right, there we have it. Brisket's wrapped. Let's get it put back on the smoker. All right, so the way we wrapped it, we still have our fat cap down. Point is on this side, flat is on the left side. At this point in the cook, I'm going to take my Pit Boss probe here. Any probe will do. I just like the one that comes with the Pit Boss. We don't want to probe right in the point because it's going to read hotter there. We don't want to go all the way at the end of the flat. We want to go right here kind of in the middle. And we're just going to plug it right in here to the Pit Boss. All right, we're just going to plug it right in here into the first spot. So our brisket's cooled down a little bit since we got it off the smoker, but it's going back up into the 150s. Okay, so now that it's wrapped, we've got the temp probe in there monitoring our temperature. All we're going to do the rest of the cook is just kind of watch that internal temperature. I'm looking for a temperature of about 202. Once we get to that point, we'll come out with our thermopin. Any sort of meat probe will work. At that point, we want to test for tenderness and we will go from there. So now you, my little friends, get to run wild. This is going to take... I'm gonna guess at least two to three hours. We'll see how quick it goes. After about the three hour mark, if we haven't made quite a bit of progress through this stall, I'm gonna bump the temperature up to 275. So I'm gonna see it back out here in two hours to check on our internal temperature. Um, oh yeah, that's right, let's go. Hey gang coming at you live from the smoker. Let's do a quick quick little check-in. Our brisket has been on the smoker for 13 hours. Truly feels like a lifetime. I cannot wait to sink my teeth into this brisket. Now, we've finally reached a point where our probe is reading 202. So I came out to check, check the tenderness and it just wasn't quite there. Waited about another hour just came out and now I think we're at a point where I feel good about pulling the brisket off the smoker and letting it take a little rest. So let me bring you in and show you what I mean when I'm saying the brisket is probing tender. This is where a point is <clears throat> and the probe just slides in, that paper's grabbing it, but the probe slides in really nice. It's met with basically no resistance. Look at how juicy that thing is, holy cow. Gotta show you, this is a very juicy brisket. Remember, I did not wrap it with any liquid, so this is just our brisket juices. Good sign. Okay, this brisket is looking super juicy. That's why I wanna make sure I give it a lot of time to rest to kinda just let those juices go back into the meat so that when we cut it, we don't just lose everything. So it is going to be dark when I bring it back outside to the brisket, but this rest time is just too important to skip over. So like I said, we're about, we are 13 hours into the brisket cook. Now we're entering the rest period. Um, when I bring it back in, I'll let you know how long our rest is, but I would like to let it rest for at least an hour if possible. So Smells good, looks good, can't wait to get my hands on her. Let's go! Hey gang, bringing you back in. We have had a one hour and 15 minute rest on this brisket. I am so freaking excited to cut in and get a little taste of our hard work today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this long before we jump in and slice it. If you've watched this long and you've been hanging out with me this long, will you do me the pleasure of commenting, she's a brisket boss? I would just appreciate that so much and I would love to see all the comments. All right, don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to miss future episodes of Pit Boss Backyard Bosses. I'll be back. You can also catch me on my channel at Barbecue by Maisie. Let's slice into this brisket and see how we did. Some might call this moist. I like these little end pieces with that good bark on it. Mmm. Mm. Such good flavor. The rubs don't overpower that beef flavor when you make a brisket. You want to be able to taste that beef. And that's what I can taste. Absolutely delicious. A nice little reward after a long day smoking a brisket. 
on the Pit Boss Pro Series found at Lowe's. All right, you guys, appreciate you so much for hanging out with me today while we smoke this brisket. Quick recap of our day. Started the cook off at 250 degrees till we had the bark that we loved. Bumped up the temperature to 275 just to kind of speed things along while it was wrapped in that butcher paper. And then I got a little impatient, bumped the temperature up to 300 for the rest of the cook. Overall cook time was 13 hours with an hour and 15 minute rest. 14 hour and 15 minute day. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm fed and I'm tired. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to the Pit Boss YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of Pit Boss Backyard Bosses. You, looking at you, have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time.